friends and greens for the day welcome back to the tutorial on ISTQB advanced test analyst this is the last tutorial in this particular series and we'll be having sample questions on chapter 6 meanwhile I'm going on with a uh, toll uh, the poll uh, post please just recommend your suggestions for taking up a new tutorial series about ISTQB certification meanwhile we are having the next two topics or the last topic to go here the two topics have been done in the previous tutorial we have 6.3 types of test tools when occurring with the types of test tools uh, the most of the things have been discussed initially in foundation level syllabus uh, when you talk about the sixth chapter of foundation level there's a topic about different breakup on different types of tools, the classification on tools like what are test management, static analysis, dynamic analysis, or testing, test executions, specialized testing tools. All the classification is provided. You would quickly find a card over to assist you to take you to the back uh, foundation video to gain some basic understanding before you continue with this video. So the types of testing here, it is more important for the test analyst to understand and acquire information on what type of tool to use at what point of time because we have different tools as we know from foundation already and the different tools have different way of applying within the process. So of course a test analyst should have a very important aspect to recognize the right set of tool at the right point of time within the test process also to understand that what kind of tool will increase more efficiency and add value to the testing effort while taking help of a tool. The tool is just not to acquire or make use of it. It is also equally important that it helps you minimize your efforts and add more value or in terms of quality to the process. Further, when you talk about the different types of tools, here we are targeting test design tools to understand what this design tools are all about. So as we know already, test design tools are basically to create test cases and prepare test data in some part of it to uh, write your test cases, which basically helps you with that. Now, of course, it is important for the test analyst to understand the requirement document format, like what kind of formats are being um, you know, created, is this compatible with the tool or not. At the same time, you also look into the models or inputs provided to the test analyst, and based on that, the tools can be feeded when, and following that, the test cases can be created, which can be used. So most of the test management tools comes with this input uh, internal option, where you can convert the description of the requirements at the test cases directly, and you can use it for the execution as well. So all the test analysts need to understand is what are different design tools available in the market and does that really fit into your process because fitting into the process is equally important if your process does not accommodate a tool of course that would be any you know is investing an extra cost and would not add any return on investment to you within your process so it could be uh, complex and in terms of test data we have different tools which generates data for equivalence partition boundary value analysis or classification tree the combinatorial technique where combinations can be created so several things are available in the market which a test analyst can recognize and pick up one from and the following tool we have the test data preparation tools uh, where again we are separating the test design in with the test data preparation where it is equally important to generate the test data which will be used in form of feeding the inputs while executing the test cases so it is important for the test analyst in terms of preparing the test data to analyze the document such as requirement or source code to determine what kind of data is required to validate these functionalities. Also, take a data set from a particular system and scrub to anonymize it to remove any personal information while still maintaining the internal integrity of the data. So probably sometime we it'll end up creating some additional information from our thoughts, but the system may not accept it. So we just have to make sure that we filter out the data which would be accepted by the product while testing it so that we don't have any invalid set of data being used for a particular component or particular feature. So having a valid set of data is equally important for the uh, process and testing. So test analysts must take uh, quite interest in deciding and determining the set of data which is required for that. So similarly, the set of input parameters will be applicable at this point of time, making sure that the data, if they are parameterized for data-driven testing, uh, then the parameters are used as for the naming conventions or these parameters are directed to the set of data which you have prepared for. 
At the end, we are talking about automated test execution tools. Of course, we know about test execution tools from the early sections, and we also try to understand what is automation. Automation is, of course, creating and executing a test script which runs automatically uh, without personal intervention. And of course, the test script has to be prepared under the automation test tools, which will be having a specific language which can be applied to it. And based on that, we will be creating, setting it up, and executing the tests on the application to achieve the you know several benefits of automation put together. So for test analysis, it is really important to decide and select the right set of tools required for automation depending on the product language and protocols. Further, the benefits which will be added uh, to this, the test analyst must take care of that and here are a few of them. That is to reduce the cost, to run more tests more often, to run the same test in many environments, to make test execution more repeatable, and to run tests that would be impossible to run manually. So at the same time, of course, when you're investing something, it is very a key, key principle thing to uh, be analyzed by the test analyst is to understand the return on investment. Of course, we understand at any point of time, the moment you invest on something, you don't start getting the returns right from there. So you need to look at the long-term goals. So you need to understand how we can get more benefits by investing such amount and such tool. And of course, the effort required to prepare the automation frameworks. So generally, the automation test execution tools will be used in agile environment where automations or everything is mostly automated. On the other side, the regression is one of the things which could be used other than agile as well because regressions are quite often automated and uh, does not have a primary objective of finding defect but making sure that everything is still working fine after minor or major changes to an existing application. So understanding the need of a test tool, understanding the point where the tool is required, whether it will add any value to the process or it's just going to be a piece of junk even after investing a lot of amount is what the core responsibility of the test analyst at this point of time. So altogether, this is what we have for this particular tutorial. Should you have any more queries, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to address you. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring and keep understanding about the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.